Okay, I'm sorry about the angle, but what is this project? This project is growing clover in aluminum foil, aluminum foil like this. Or well, maybe it's a bit hard to see, but that's clover under control. And it's under a light, and the light, each of these lights are grow lights, but they're different setting, different types of grow lights. This grow light is seven. 11, 7, 7, 11, that's a total, that's not a lot of power that's being given off, but what I'm trying to do is observe radioactive samples. I have this radiation meter. Well, I, yeah, I'm going to test just a little bit of it to, sh to show you what the reading is in between just these two, because they're the one I know. They're the most potent radioactive samples I have. We set it for a minute and we record what kind of radiation is in the middle. Twenty seconds needs to go to a minute. It's already at 155 counts per minute, one microsieven. It'll go up to quite a high level in a minute. It's difficult to get, I gotta hold it like this. Thirty nine, forty seconds is already at one point seven five microsieverts an hour. It's pretty potent. Two point one, two point two, and three forty five microsieverts an hour. So I'm going, to, I'm going to do this, and these are the ones who are just exposed to the elf, to the, to the uranium ore only. Now the clover isn't growing as as well as I want as well as I want it to, but I don't think it has anything to do with radiation. I think the radiation didn't do much for the clover, and the radiation didn't grow because I have I have some graphs of using. The, a ruler to put it in the soil and every single couple of 24 hours you measure the growth and I've done this before and the data itself doesn't prove anything that it shows normal growth between the four of them because light output but it also tells you that the radiation had very little to no effect on the growth of the clover interesting but I wish it did but you probably need huge samples of a radioactive ore like um, pitch pitch blend or samples would be dangerous and illegal like 50 to 100 grams of pitch blend which would be dangerous for your health and Cody from Cody's lab a long time ago told me that he tried doing that with seeds um lettuce seeds of high potency radiation that he that he got from other sources and that kind of stuff it didn't do anything there wasn't any difference between the, the regular seeds and the ones from your with uranium and that's what I'm seeing right here and that's what I'll be showing you About two microsieverts an hour, 322. It always changes just a little bit each time you do it. That's just how the reading is. It's just a calibration curve issue, and you have to keep that in mind. Is the radiation meter that I'm using is not very accurate itself. But I'm going to continue with explaining what I'm doing. That I can do now. And the humidity right now. 20.3 20, 20 degrees Celsius, that's an average, it goes to 18 to 19, 18 to 20, and the humidity is quite low. So what did I do? I tested the water. It has a pH of 6.2, as you can see. And I've tested a lot of the micronutrients. 14.1, lead, copper, iron, chromium, sulfite, free chlorine, bromine, Nitrate, nitrate, mercury, fluorine, hardness. The pH was 6.2, but everything else was zero. So there's nothing in here. Even though it's a small amount of chlorine from the tap water, it's, it, it's res residual type of, like it's, it, it gets 
broken down and never stopped for consumed by bacteria or natural things and it doesn't have any effect with the water. This is water with soil in it. Soil from this potting shed stuff or the premium organic and herb mix that I, I put in about 10 grams and put in about 100 millimeters of water. Let it, let it, I shook it for a while when I tested it. I used, I used what is very important universal indicator, in, indicator from a chemistry kit to determine what the pH of the, of the soil and water is because the pH of the water is slightly acidic and this uses, it, this has nitrogen but it also has compounds that are organic. So when you, put, when you mix the soil, when you mix the soil with, um, with the solution, from the, that's pH 7, it turns yellow. It, it was turning green, which indicates that it, it's a pH of 7, and the water is, slight, is, is um, al uh, alkalinic. The water, that I'm, the water in between the soil will be neutral, but the water that I'm, that I'm using is all, it was always 6.2. Now, to do this, you have to have some, yeah, uh, some stands or some um, like these things, um, um, what are they there, um, jack stands, what are they called, because that way you can move it up and down and, and, and stabilize the light, and that's what I've been doing, I had to buy a few more. Now, you also need, very important, one of these electric timers. It's set for 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is the graphs and data and some things that you should be aware of if you're going to, if you're going to repeat this. I don't recommend it because it didn't have good results, but it did have some results. Going into Excel. Maybe I'll turn off these lights so it's better for... That's no open. Had to find the right one. Let me do that again. It'll take some time. Oh, here we go. Here's the right, right, pl right plot. That would be a, a hard thing to see, but the blue plot, which is linear growth for control, is y equals zero point zero zero four seven minus zero point six nine seven four the slope, and r squared is point nine one six seven. This is hard to see. But I will be trying to show it. <sighs> that light cannot be turned off, so I can't do anything about that. But I can show the um, the growth with the uranium. They're all about the same. They're, they're a little bit different. Like they're a little bit off. Not, but their their R squared value is very similar. And 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 the and the data, as you can see here. It's similar, but it doesn't really tell you much, except that the radiation itself is, did not have an effect on the clover because it would have seen a major difference in, the, in, the, in those two data points. And for that, it's the y value is 0.0051x minus 0 0.1509, and the r squared value is 0 0.9367. There's a few more other ones like the... Um, the thorium plus the uranium has a slope value of 0 0.01, 0 0.051 minus 0 0.15. And it's very similar to the other one. Like it's just, as you can see with the two p plots, they are very similar. I'm not that really, I don't know a lot. Like I have some, pro Excel is not my best, 
best tool to use. I always had trouble with Excel, but I can understand what graphs are about. Now I'm gonna, before I finish this, it's a 10 minute video, but I'm gonna show um, Word and I'm gonna show some safety about what to do in case the uranium ore basically breaks off and you might need a UV light or something like that to determine for us the material to be safe and you should wear a mask and gloves. Here we go. That's the data. Clover takes seven to 10 days. Yeah, in the basement. Temperature 18 to 20 degrees. Lumen is 4,000 lumen. Well, I, I go on about the urea, the nitrogen sources, but urea, monomethyl urea, or ammonia phosphate, I have no idea what, what it is. It could be just nitrogen fertilizer, which they use a uh, natural fungus that fix it, check the nitrogen cycle, which converts it into, into n n nitrogen oxides and that kind of stuff, which then gets broken down into nitrogen, so you'd have that in the soil. This is what, as you can see, for radioactive sources for four days, this is how much radiation you're getting in gamma. The rad source of the control is still being affected by the uranium ore, so it's... Can you see that? And then we have that for uranium ore. We have uranium thorium, and then we have the... Um, Uranium pottery soil. Uranium pottery with the soil. It's the lowest output of radiation because that is not a very potent source. And and the aluminum pan kind of reflects, absorbs a lot of the radiation. Now what you have to be what you have to be aware of if you're dealing with radioactive ore, which is very critical because you can get radiation or radioactive particles in your lung and get cancer that way. Now, you need gloves. Gloves and shielding. Always wear gloves when, when working with radioactive material. Even if it's in an ore like this, even if it's like in this clamp. As I said here, if it falls or cracks, that you'll get tons of uranium ore. That's why this is kind of dangerous. And always wear a dust mask, at least to protect yourself from the dust. What you also need is a UV light, which turns that tur would turn any of the materials around here into a into a bright green color, like like sort of like what the uranium glass does. It will show up on that uh, on the table with a UV light. Turn off all the lights and take out a UV lamp. I uh, I'm not sure what I did with it, but let me check. I'm pretty sure I have it. No, I misplaced that. But it doesn't really matter because it, it, I'm telling you that it is. It will, tr it, it will make the table under the UV light, if there is any issue, green, green powder. And if you have that, then it's a contamination. And so it's, it's concerning if then you have to call the city or have the, a crew to nuclear regulatory people come in and labs. Like if you had a lot of uranium dust spread, spread like if, if this would fall and, and release uranium dust, your the main problem is Radon, radium, and uranium dust is sticky and accumulates up in the atmosphere in the area around it. So always be extremely, extremely careful with dealing with radioactive ore. Normally under normal circumstances, the radioactive ore is protective, protected and won't do anything, but if it drops and on the floor or that, or if it, if it breaks as an ore sample and you get dust and you inhale that, it just take a speck of that to give you lung cancer. If you have like a a 60 or 70 percent chance of dying of lung cancer, but normally under these circumstances, this is the radioactive ore, and it's already starting to crack because I used the clamp. But without that, I would never be able to do this. Keep that in mind when doing that. That this kind of damages the ore itself, but as long as it's kept in the bag and you're doing, and you're being very very careful of it, the risk of being exposed to radiation radioactive ore dust is minimal, but you still have to be aware of it. It's not something you should take lightly when dealing with anything radioactive, especially since it's quite potent, and because it's uranium, it's, it's uranium, uranium dust hazard, which means you inhale that and 
That, that kills people when people get exposed to high amounts of uranium. That's why you can't extract uranium because the yellow cake of material that you get is enriched or has a high amount of radon and radium, which that's another thing. If you're gonna be doing something like this, don't go over 50 grams any radioactive source. Like, like for example, um, pitch blender. If it's over 50 grams, then it's dangerous for your health or dangerous for other people because it releases a ton amount of radon gas for uranium, uh, uranium or thorium mix, which the, um, the nuclear physics behind it is it converts it it converts into plutonium, uranium, different things. And that slowly converts back into, um, I'm just doing it on top of my head, Ra um, radon, radium and then radon, which is a gas, which leaks out. So it's always nice if you're dealing with smaller samples to have a, a, a jar like this, a cookie jar, which has lead strips, and it'll keep the gas inside so you're not being exposed to it. In fact, I'm only doing this for a week or so. That's a short period of time exposure for the radioactive materials. If you go past a few weeks, I don't recommend you do this because the radon gas could accumulate and build up and that's why I'm being very careful to make it so I'm only doing it for a week or so because I don't want to be unnecessarily exposed myself to radon gas, which is a carcinogen, and causes cancer, but it's only, it's only with repeated high exposure to the radioactive material. Thank you for watching this video. It, it was interesting, but I just don't think the radiation is, radiation could be conclusively is a conclusive result of causing the, the, the uh, plant to grow very quickly because that is definitely not the case for this. A little bit disappointing but it actually shows that it's very hard to get radioactive samples like this, uh, radioactive samples to boost the metabolism because even when you have it nine centimeters away the loss of radiation per centimeter is so great that that radiation sample can't really penetrate the seeds that much. I, I really have any doubts that this kind of these kind of samples can do things, and maybe in the past I was wrong. But thank you for watching this video. Chan out, an interesting channel.